Can I help you? Yes, come to hear of an old man's adventures. Sure. You bet I would. But I'm sorry if this comes across the wrong way, traveler, but well, I'm poor. I'm no good for jobs anymore, and people aren't going to pay you for just existing. Weary of the whispers. Tell you what, you give me a couple of septums, and I'll regale you with some stories. Sound like a fair trade, stranger? Thanks, stranger. Rare to see such a generous sort here in Bruma. It was a bright, sunny Turdas and Whiterun Hold. I was hanging around Dragon's Reach, hoping to meet a rich noble lady and strike up a conversation. <laughs> what can I say? I was young and naive. Imagine my surprise when out of the keep, instead of a noble woman, comes a beautiful battle maiden, covered head to toe in beautifully crafted steel. She carried a huge steel claymore on her back, and I have no doubt that she'd have wielded it just as well, if not better, than any of the city guard. Paralyzed by panic, I remained silent, there not to say anything to her, even as she was breathing in my face. She chuckled, then asked me if I was up for a challenge. Said there were some bandits in a local cave, marked it on my map, and challenged me to clear it out. Blinded by my own lust, I accepted. She handed me that glistening greatsword she carried on her back. I wasn't trained with a weapon, but I was strong. I could hold it, unlike most. She said she was impressed by that. So I took the greatsword to the cave she had described. Well, it was actually a mine of sorts. Ember shard, they called it. I headed inside. Down the slope, I could just see through the gloom the red glowing eyes of a Dunmer. I assumed he was a bandit, but I wanted to be sure. <laughs> Foolish and young, that was me. So, like a damned fool, I called out to him. What are you doing down here, I asked. He said nothing, but I saw his eyes narrow with anger in the dark. Then they got larger and larger, and I heard footsteps. He was coming towards me. I was done for. Then, all of a sudden, I heard a clink. The Dunmer had stepped on a pressure plate. And just like that, a whole pile of boulders came crashing down from the rafters and crushed him under them. That was one bandit dealt with. His screams as he died and the sound of the rocks falling attracted the attention of the rest of the bandits in the mine. I heard who I can only assume was their leader shout, in his typically guttural orcish voice. Seems like we've got company, boys. Weapons out. Eyes peeled. Let's go. I hid in the darkness, once again paralyzed by fear and doubt. Then an idea struck me. What if I made a trap of my own? I took the battle maiden's longsword and put it up in the rafters where the boulders were. I rearmed the pressure plate to the best of my abilities. Just as I was finished, the orc rounded the corner, as did a band of other brigands. One of them held a torch and waved it around to illuminate the whole entranceway. Soon enough, they saw me. That was it. My big moment. My life or my death. The orc saw the boulders on the ground. I can only assume he took it as a sign that the trap had already been triggered and was safe to stand on. And so he stood on the plate that was his big mistake. The great sword came careening down from the rafters with a force the likes of which I'd never seen before. By the blessings of Stendar, it impaled him straight through the gut. He bled what looked like lakes full of blood, and no sooner had I blinked than he died. The rest of the bandits very close behind him tripped over his flailing feet as he fell. They went diving headfirst into the rocks that lay on the ground and the blow on the head ended them too. It was then that the door opened behind me. My heart damn near stopped. The bandits wanted their retribution, I thought. My life's reached its end. But it was the battle maiden. She had realized I might have taken her joke seriously, and so she came to try to warn me before it was too late. She saw them all there, lying dead, including the orc who had the greatsword still sticking out of him, her eyes widened in shock. 
Let's just say I was economical with the truth when explaining what happened during the encounter. It was then she told me she was one of the Companions, an order of warriors based out of Whiterun. She said I had what it takes to be one of them, and so I joined up the next day. And that's the story of how a few happy accidents got me into a life of adventuring, I suppose. Funny the way the world works. Of course, for a small donation. If you think me a beggar, then who am I to argue? That's not what I call myself, though. I'm a washed-up old warrior who's barely managing to keep a roof over his head. Does that make me a beggar? I'll defer to your judgment, stranger. Later. I understand. Coins given to people who can do you some good, and I can't. Believe me, I understand. If you change your mind, though, I have plenty of stories to tell. My memory hasn't gone quite yet. Hmm. Good story. Yes, Ark. Hmm. Good afternoon. I'm Albecius of the Jukani family. I am privileged to enjoy quite a comfortable life, but I do try to give something back to the less fortunate folk when I can. The Great War took its toll on us, on all Cyrodiil. She may not look so different on the surface, but her spirit writhes in agony. We're quite old and quite influential. When we say things, people, important people, tend to listen. That's not to say that we're the Elder Council, but we don't tend to be ignored either. And that's not to say we don't pick up on new opportunities when we can, of course. Our family must always strive for bigger and better things. <laughs> not to sound like a priest of St. Martin. <laughs> Farewell. Can I help you? Have something for you. You're back. Any news on my wife? Well, who's the spineless wretch that sold us out? Gautier is hiding something. For some reason, the mission he ordered, he refused to talk about it. There was the records of that mission were erased from the record book, and the steward of Bruma throughoutly registers everything. And there's something suspicious in his journal, talking about on what are the factions towards that count woman from the Bruma castle and it also mentions something interesting about the beautiful orc and possibly you that's one of the noble women in the castle isn't it that woman's got it coming to her follow me and stay close now gotier the breton i'll rip his wait a breton really a breton Weak-willed, soft-spoken, magic-practicing. How could a Bret... I remember over... Go search this. If it is the damned Breton, that's when we act. Taking that lock pick of yours. Who's there? The hell? I knew I heard something. Where is he? Taking this. Uh, 
Hello? Talk to you later. Yes, Orc. Ah, watch where you're going. See that? This that that bastard. Yes, he did it. I can tell. Plain as day. He tries to speak in riddles, but it seems he's <clears throat> not all that good at subtlety. We found the bastard. But it seems it implies he got her alive. Perhaps she's still alive. Come, my friend. It's time we got to the bottom of this once and for all. We're going to Gautier's house now. I'll follow your lead. It's time for retribution. Well, he wasn't at the castle when I went to do a little investigation while you were away, so he must be somewhere. I bet he's at the house, just probably not in plain sight. Slimy, threatening bastard. Okay. Time to get payback. Hello. I know where he is. I never would have believed Gautier was the culprit, but the evidence is overwhelming. Come on, let's get to Gautier's little nest and finish him. 